I'm going to take you hands-on with Apple's new Pro hardware, the new Mac Studio and Apple Silicon Mac Pro. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and during WWDC, a traditionally software-focused event, Apple came out with a ton of hardware. There's the Apple Vision Pro virtual reality headset, there is the 15-inch MacBook Air, and in this video, I'm going to go hands-on with the all-new Mac Studio with the M2 Max and M2 Ultra, as well as the new Apple Silicon Mac Pro. So let's go ahead and dive into it. A couple things to initially note here. Despite having new silicon on the inside, not much has changed on the outside for either of these two machines. If I showed you the new Mac Studio or Mac Pro, which I am, they'd be nearly indiscernible from the last generation, though there are a couple things to look out for. So the new Mac Studio, hardware on the outside, all the exact same. The one thing that did change um, kind of hardware wise is Apple did include a new higher bandwidth HDMI output. If you max this out with the M2 Ultra on the inside, you'd be able to get up to eight 4K displays. Alternatively, you could do six 6K displays or three 8K displays, all at 60 hertz. The biggest change on the Mac Studio is moving from the M1 series chipset to the M2 series. You can choose between the M2, Pro, uh, M2 Max or the M2 Ultra on the inside. Apple says the M2 Max can compile apps 25% faster than the M1 Max and can render effects in After Effects 50% faster than the M1 Max. The M2 Ultra literally will double the power of an M2 machine because there are two M2 chipsets combined together to create the M2 Ultra. It's got a 24 core CPU and up to 20% faster than the M1 Ultra. The 76 core GPU is 30% faster than the one in the M1 Ultra and the neural engine is now 40% faster than the one found in the M1 Ultra. Those are some big jumps in terms of performance. I was fairly limited in what Apple let me try out with the M1 Ultra, but right now this thing just flies. They had Maya open, which is used to create 3D movies and stuff like Pixar uses this thing, and it's now Apple Silicon native, and it was just amazing working around these renders and seeing how fast this machine was. I mean, the M2 Max and the M2 Ultra are some seriously crazy chipsets, and it's also crazy that the Mac Studio was sticking around. A lot of people assumed that Apple would kill off the Mac Studio when the Mac Pro was finally updated to Apple Silicon, but that wasn't the case. We still have the Mac Studio in two great configurations. Speaking of the Mac Pro, let's dig into this a little bit. Whoa, hey, if I could just pop in for a second, I need to thank our sponsor for this video, VMware and VMware's Fusion Pro. Fusion Pro easily allows you to run Windows applications on your Mac without having to reboot. You can easily switch between your native Mac OS applications and your Windows applications on the fly for a near perfect user cross-platform experience. Fusion Pro is also tailored to the professional crowd, thinking developers, IT admins, QA engineers that need to run Linux and Windows applications on their Mac. Things like network simulation for testing latency, jitter or bandwidth restrictions, full or linked clones for instantly duplicating virtual machines, and remote connectivity for VMware's vSphere and ESXi host to enable users to create and manage complex virtual environments. If you would like to try out VMware's Fusion Pro for yourself and run your Windows and Linux applications right there on your Mac, there's a link for it down below in the description. Go ahead, give it a shot, and let me know what you think. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get back to our other content. So the chassis is the same that we saw as the prior generation, right? It's the same design that Apple used on the last model that it redesigned. There are a couple internal changes though. So first off, the RAM is now soldered into the chipset, so you can't change it anymore. Same thing with the GPU. The GPU is baked in to the Apple Silicon at the heart of the machine. So you can't really install additional graphics cards uh, and there's no need to install any additional memory. It's all just baked in. So before you could replace the RAM on the outside of the machine, no longer possible. But Apple has repurposed that position which allows you to install uh, custom SSD modules that you can just slot right in there. So those the RAM slots from before are now used to house SSDs. Apple even sells its own SSD upgrade kits for the new Mac Pro, and they're not compatible with a prior generation Mac Pro. 
When I was using the Intel Mac Pro, I loved the design of it and I still love it here. The thing looks absolutely gorgeous. And Apple was nice enough to remove the heatsink on the new M2 Ultra so that we can actually see the chipset behind it. You can actually see the Apple Silicon behind the heatsink and it is massive. It is such a large chip that is behind that heatsink. It just looks insane. I will say it's a very unlike Apple to have the Apple logo though on the side. It would bother me. The Apple logo should be vertical to match the machine. I'm just saying Johnny Ive would never have let this happen. But other than that, the design of this guy, the chassis is basically the same as it was before. In total, there are six PCIe expansion slots. One thing Apple did upgrade though is the Thunderbolt ports. There are now eight Thunderbolt ports total. So two on the top machine and six along the back. That is a ton of IO that you can connect directly through Thunderbolt. One of the things that I was actually surprised about was that the new Mac Pro is affordable? I mean, it's not affordable, but if you compare it to the Mac Studio, sure, the Mac Pro is a lot more expensive. You can get the same specs and it's gonna cost you like $3,000 less to choose a Mac Studio over the Mac Pro. But the Mac Pro still caters to those high-end professionals that need that expandable option. So there's still a market for that Mac Pro. Connect digital signal processing cards for audio professionals, uh, digital interface SDI or IO cards for video professionals, or connect with professional cameras and monitors and additional networking and storage for those various users. So there's a lot you can do with those PCI slots to customize the Mac Pro to your workflow. And let's be real, we're looking at, you know, Lucas Arts, they're not gonna blink at the $3,000 or few thousand dollar price difference between a Mac Pro and a Mac Studio. But if we look at it compared to the Intel model, it's so much cheaper. So in 2019, if you maxed out a Mac Pro, you're adding the graphics cards, you're adding afterburner cards, which are now included in the M2 Ultra, and you don't need them. In fact, the M2 Ultra has the performance of seven afterburner cards that the Intel machine required. So if you maxed out that Intel version, it would run you like $52,000, $53,000 in 2019. Here in 2023, if you get the new Apple Silicon version and you max it out, all the way, max it out, brand new M2 Ultra, 24 core CPU, 76 core GPU, 30 core, 32 core neural engine, 192 gigs of unified memory, and of course we're gonna add that eight terabyte SSD. All that together and you're only looking at $12,200, less than a quarter of what the maxed out Intel version would be. So compared to the previous model Mac Pro, the new one is a lot cheaper when you max everything out, which is pretty incredible. And of course the M2 Ultra offers so amazing performance over Intel machines. Apple's done a great job here with these new ones. Not everyone's gonna need a Mac Pro by far, but I'm glad it still exists for those workflows that need it. The Mac Studios are gonna create a lot of demand for those particular machines. A lot of people have been using them now and kind of ditching the Mac Pro. They're just such wonderful, compact machines uh, that professionals are loving. Let me know what you guys think of the new Mac Studio and the new Mac Pros. I had a great time testing them out. Go ahead and check out links down below in the description if you're interested in either of these machines. If you have any questions, throw them up on Twitter or down below in the comments.